Thank you all for being here today. Uh, as she said, I'm Alexander Savkovic. I'm coming from uh, the biggest Greek hosting provider and the domain register. It's actually a group of brands in Artia. And uh, we have brands in Serbia. It's one uh, in top 10 hosting companies, Mint. Papaki is the biggest Greek domain register. Top host is biggest uh, dedicated VPS and that kind of stuff reseller. The core is the first WooCommerce, managed WooCommerce um, hosting and Hostel, the biggest Albanian domain register. So, and uh, my job there is to track what Mint and Hostel are doing there. Um, today we will talk about uh, e-commerce future uh, because I think that we are making a huge mistakes while we are starting uh, building our e-commerce web shops and that the trust is pretty much shaken and that customers are losing trust in e-commerce and online shops. So, but why that is happening? First of all, I need to say, actually I have to say two things. First one, uh, I have one disclaimer for all of you. Uh, and uh, I will use words like asshole, crap and bullshit when it is because there is no other explanation than to say asshole, bullshit, and crap. Uh, also, uh, I have to apologize to the previous speaker uh, because he shared a lot of statistics. And uh, I know that 84% of all statistics in presentation are fake because uh, speakers are using statistics uh, to give uh, more authority to their talks. So you should know one thing if you see this because I would be an asshole if I said that 84% of something is fake and statistics are fake. So 84% is also fake percentage because I don't have a freaking clue what is the percentage of fake statistics. And what is bad? Well, the starting point is really bad. When people are starting with e-commerce web shops and any shop business, we have one bad manner, what we're doing. Like, we see that our neighbor has a bakery, and it's a really su successful bakery, and then we open a bakery right next to it. Because we think that probably our bakery will be at least successful as his bakery is. But that's not the case. So, there is something that you need to have different than others in order to succeed. Also, if you ever uh, listen to some talk or read a book from Simon Sinek, uh, people are rather will buy what, uh, why than what. What actually that means. When you're buying a laptop or a mobile phone, I'm used to Apple. I have uh, MacBook Air, I have iPhone. So for me, I don't look at what is inside the computer. I don't look what's inside my phone. So I don't care about processor, about the graphic card. I only care that it's Apple. And probably for the lesser price, I could find some Lenovo or some Asus or Acer or whatever with better configuration and better hardware, but I will go with Apple because I'm buying why, not what. I'm not buying a laptop. Next thing, very important, is to discover what is your competition, not who. There was one great example from Dan Olson in a book, uh, Lean Product Playbook. You can find it online as well on Amazon. Um, he, he is actually advisor for uh, big companies creating software products and that kind of stuff. And there was a company in the US, they were creating software for uh, submitting your tax report every year, personal tax report. And in the US, it's a big deal. They're keeping every invoice they paid, uh, paid something, all receipts, everything they keep, uh, so they can deduct that amount from their tax at the end of the year. And uh, they created a software to do that, to make your life easier, less miserable, because you're doing that every day. And what they did, they discovered that there are two companies, two softwares in the US doing the same thing, similar. So they were thinking what to offer more than those two companies to have more users and to take some market share from them. But then, then Olsen came and changed completely philosophy. 
because competition hold only 2% of US citizens, 98% of US citizens were using something completely different. So competition was what, not who. Can you imagine what was the competition? The pencil and the paper. 98% of US citizens were using pencil and the paper. And only 2% of US citizens were using any software. So it's not the point to take uh, some customers that already use some software from your competition than to take customers that are not using any softwares. To find a way how to explain to them that it's better to use software than a pen and a paper. Also, shops with unique products are more successful and now you will say, yes, you just invented hot water. Of course, that shops with unique products will have um, will be more successful, but what you can actually, how you can target some specific groups which are not specifically for that product. You're not targeting that group of people for the product, but what you offer with that product might target some groups of people, like eco-friendly products, eco-friendly packaging, no child labor in the supply chain, which is very hard because I believe that today we all have something wearing on us with child labor in supply chain. And let's say recycling. By doing this, you will target some specific groups of people who really, really care about this stuff. And your product is actually the same as all other products on the market. What is, actually this part is the most important one. What is extremely bad? Drop shipping became AliExpress. So you install WooCommerce, you buy a plugin, AliExpress, something, drop shipping, or whatever, or Shopify. Then you connect it with your website, you create an account in AliExpress, voila, you're a drop shipper. You have a new business, you're a business owner, you're a shop owner, and you, you can rock the world. Number two are fake shops. And number three is elephant sales margins. So, I will give you some examples for this. This is a Serbian web shop. It's called Ship Gratis RS. I don't care if they will be mad at me because I'm using them as, exam as an example because they're assholes, so I don't care. And you can see that the price for shoes was 10,120 dinners. It's like 85 euros when you convert it. And there is some huge discount of almost 70% if you buy it in the next six hours. Because they are so cool and they want to give you some huge discount on that pair of shoes. First of all, if you Google Sterling shoes, that brand doesn't exist. There is no Sterling shoes on Google. So they already scammed you selling you sterling shoes that doesn't exist. And there was some extremely huge discount only for the next six hours. But then you got smart enough to have AliExpress and you can see the same pair of shoes in the top right corner for 25 US dollars. So they're trying to scam you from the very beginning, from the first step when you visited their website or you found their ad on Instagram or Google or wherever, they started to scam you. Another example, I wanted to buy a watch to my girlfriend for birthday because uh, the time is pretty much relative to her and I wanted to buy something like a joke for a birthday. And I looked for some watches and then of course Instagram started to pile me up with ads with watches. And as you can see here, Suntu watch is 70% off. Suntu is Finland brand. It's high-end brand. The watches are like 1,000 euros. That is the price for the wristwatch. And the name of the shop is Lossa Lime. Something. Okay. And uh, I'm always clicking on these buttons to learn more because you're spending their money by doing that because they're paying per click. So click every time on everything because you will spend in their money. And they don't have enough money to spend if everyone clicks on everything. And then you got redirected for, to a shop 
lgfo.ml. Do you know ML uh, from which country is that TLD? No. It would be good that it's Moldova, unfortunately. It's Mali in Africa, and they had a civil war like two years ago. So if you buy something there, do you think that you will get your money back like ever? No. Probably if you're from Mali, you would not get your money back. So, but if you click on some of those wristwatches, you get redirected to another website. It's sunto.online. And it was not hard to me to find a real price for this wristwatch. And in Serbia, this is official authorized reseller of Sunto watches in Serbia. It's f it was 55,000 dinners, which is around 500 euros. So that is the regular price for that watch. And it was discounted price on their website. But then you have it for 16 pounds for staggering 97.1% of discount on the regular price. And they said that it was 70% off on Instagram. So they lied themselves. You see what they're doing. And if you buy this watch, you're probably retarded. Because if, you're, if you have two grams of brain inside your head, you will not click add to cart. Because no one can sell you a wristwatch that costs 550 pounds for 16 pounds. Because even, uh, what is the name of that part that goes around your hand? Wrist, yes. Cost more, wristband cost more than 16 pounds for that watch. Elephant sales margin. This is when I was looking to buy some joke wristwatch to my girlfriend. And it's also Serbian. It says 15.6 US dollars for a wristwatch. If you buy two or more, you have a free shipping. So if you spend 30 bucks, 31 actually, you will have free shipping. Then you go, of course, AliExpress. And there is Geneva wristwatches, free shipping for one dollar from China, and this shop is in Serbia. So they are shipping 100 kilometers or 200 kilometers, and the other guys for one dollar are shipping four or 5,000 kilometers for free. And they are not asking you to buy two wristwatches to have free shipping. And then I was so persistent to find the same one. And the same one is 135 with free shipping from China. And if I buy it in Serbia, it would be 15.6. That is another really, really bad thing about e-commerce these days. So when you see all of this, you're like, why would they buy anything online? And it's a big lie that uh, e-commerce is rising and that is growing rapidly. It is growing rapidly, but only for known brands, for big brands. Smaller brands can succeed in really, really, really small percentage, only if you're really unique and if you really put some effort into it. But why people then are buying online despite everything? First of all, you can check product reviews. But we need to say that product reviews are also fake because people are mostly buying product reviews. And not only uh, on their web shops, they're also buying product reviews for TripAdvisor, for everywhere where you go, you, people are trying to scam you somehow. And then you visit some place that you saw some great reviews and you actually see that the most of them were fake and paid because probably the most of those people who left the review never visited that place. But in that sea of reviews, you might find some that are actually real. It saves our time because you can buy something while you're here. If my talk is boring to you, you can search something and buy something online. You can compare prices in different shops. This is especially important for bigger brands. So if you're buying something known, like 
let's say LG TV, you can see in many different shops the price, compare prices and find uh, the least price and something that is closest to you to buy it. Wider selection, there is one great thing in Greece, it's called Scruz GR. It's a website uh, where you connect your e-shop to, you're paying like 500 or 600 euros yearly. They are taking care that you're real, that you're not fake. And uh, Greeks are not using Google when they want to buy something. They're using Scruz. Because in Scruz, you have, if you type in like Nike Night Gazer, you will have compared prices for Nike Night Gazer in, in all shops connected to Scruz. Also, you can see if the number is available, color, or whatever you need. So Scruz is pretty much interesting in Greece, and I believe that it will spread all around Europe, something like that, because it gives uh, more trust to people to buy when they find, find something on Scruz. Also, in online shops, very often, you have some discounted prices, like 40-50% if you buy online, because it's more expensive to have a real shop and to pay like two, three or four thousand euros in the city center for 20 square meter shop than to have online shop. And that is why they're giving you huge discounts if you buy online. Of course, you have to subscribe to a newsletter so they can pile you up and spam you with their offers. What is the brighter e-commerce future, in my opinion? No mobile apps. How many mobile apps per month you install on your phone after you buy a phone? You install like Viber, WhatsApp, Messenger, Facebook, Instagram, that kind of stuff. Some navigation, GPS, whatever. And after that, that much? Yep. Probably zero per month. I sometimes install some games and delete those games when I'm bored, but that's it. You're not installing applications to your phone. Especially if you want to buy shoes, you will definitely not install application for some shoe shop because you're not buying shoes every day. You're buying shoes two or three times in a year, and that's it, maybe less. So you don't want to have application in your phone just because you will buy shoes. But if you use progressive web applications, they're awesome because you're not installing anything on your phone, you just put an icon. And for uh, web shop owners, it's better to have progressive web applications because you're abusing the client's phone and his resources and not your server resources. And also when you update something in your progressive web application, it will be automatically updated on your client side. So you're not dependent on the client and if he updated uh, application or not. So it's better to use progressive web application. And uh, Lancome, when they rebuilt it, uh, their mobile, their website, and they added progressive web application, uh, conversions went up really significantly. It was like really, really uh, for them. They didn't, they, they uh, didn't expect it at all to have that, that growth on, on their shop. What else? Buy directly on social and chat apps. In China, it's normal. They already have options to buy directly on social. So you don't have to leave Facebook, let's say, some their Facebook. You don't have to leave to buy. You can buy there. You're not redirected to some shop. You're buying in social application. Also, in Viber, Snapchat, and other applications, you will have option to buy. So you will not have to leave Instagram to buy something from some uh, e-shop. And that is really good because, because I believe that then Instagram and, and others will check if you're fake or not. They're stealing our data, so they should at least do that for us. What more? In-car e-commerce, shopping on the go. We are wrecking our cars every day because we are looking at our phones, while we are driving, because we are looking at those huge tablets that they are putting in every car these days. And they are collecting information 
where we are going, where we are traveling, when we are traveling, how much time we are spending, what is our speed. So they know everything about our everyday movement through the city. So nearly 135 million Americans are using on-the-go shopping every day because they are getting push notifications when there is a gas station around or so. And with the newer cars, when your gas is low, they will probably send you a notification there is a gas station one mile away from you so you can stop by there and add more fuel because you're, you're running out of fuel. So that is one of the things that will be a future of e-commerce and we need to use that. What else? Detailed product information. When you're buying something, you're not buying if you're not sure that it will fit you. So if you see a t-shirt or shirt or jeans or whatever, without detailed information of its size, you will not buy it. What you can do if you're a web shop owner, and it's really easy, if you're selling shoes, I know that for Adidas, I'm wearing like 44 and two thirds, and for Nike, it's 45 and a half. So there is a difference, but you know that there is a difference, so you can compare your shoes with Nike and Adidas. And you can say, if you're wearing Nike 45, you should probably go with 44 and a half with our shoes because our shoes are bigger. That way people will know what to buy. Otherwise, when you see some shoes, some brand that is not that own, or maybe you never wear some that brand, maybe it's famous brand, but you're never wearing it before, you, uh, it's 10 times easier for your customer to find the uh, size by matching it with something that is really, really known and everyone is wearing. Augmented reality. It's so easy. You have it on your iPhone. You have that measure application that is measuring uh, in centimeters if you want to see how big something is. And there is one application, Diamond Edge, they built an application where you can see how ring looks on your finger. And you can check the size, the size of the diamond, you can check, you can change the shape of the ring, and you can see how it looks on your hand. And both, you will get the size. What is the size of the ring that you should order? Also, gap. It's famous brand. You add your height, weight, your body type, and then when you pick the size, small, medium, or large, it actually shows you how it will look on your body. It's easy as that. Augmented reality is not something new. It's not high tech. It's easy to build. Disrupt or die. First of all, diverse sales and support teams. Why? Because I would probably rather buy something from, for, from someone who is similar to me and who has similar interests like me. But you can lie. Do you really think when you contact support from some big brand that some Michael actually responded to you? Or some Eric? Does it have to be the name of that person who is chatting with you? Probably not. Well, in 99% it's not. Because the big companies are mostly using cheap labor for support, and those people are not Michael, Eric, and John. Those people are mostly from China, India, some uh, less developed, undeveloped countries like Serbia, my country or so. And then you can see that they're using names. And you see, when you see that English that they're typing, that they're not native English speakers. But you can lie your customers and they will feel better. They will know that you're lying, but they will feel better. Limit artificial intelligence and hire humans. Because people like to talk to humans, not to robots and machines. What I hate the most is intercom when there is a chat and I start typing in chat 
how to create a backup and it offers me FEQ, uh, frequently asked questions to check there. If I wanted to read your article about how to create a backup, I would do it earlier. I would not uh, contact your support and I would never open that chat box. So I don't want to waste time and read, I don't know, this big article. Just tell me where to click and that's it. But they're uh, pushing you in three or four different steps before you can actually chat with an agent. And that is stressing customers and probably the most of the customers will just leave that chat and leave your product. Why hiring humans, humans is good? Have you heard about Zappos? Do you know what, what Zappos is? It's the big company from Europe. And what they did one year, their customer loyalty team sends out nearly 13,000 greeting cards, but they were written by hand. Not printed and posted, written by hand. All of their employees working in cities where they have loyal customers, they took postcards and bring them on the door, ring on the bell and said, hi, I'm from Zappos, this is our postcard. We are, uh, want to say thank you for being our loyal customer. That is that human relations. And that is the future of e-commerce and I think future in general because people will, will start getting sick of artificial intelligence and that kind of stuff communicating with robots because we are not communicating with robots. Use your customers as a salesperson, word of mouth. I again invented hot water. People also buy from people they trust and they trust people they like. So if you're buying WordPress theme, in example, or a plugin, you will probably ask someone from Slovakian WordPress community. Because you trust those people, they're from the same group as you are, they're similar to you, and of course that you will trust them. And if they give you an advice, you will probably go and buy something that someone from Slovakian WordPress community um, suggested. So the brighter e-commerce future is definitely trust. The trust is shaken because of all these scams, spamming, stealing our data. Um, you know what happened once? You know that they are recording actually your voice messages in uh, chat applications. And they are actually mark doing marketing uh, according to those voice messages. Uh, me and my girlfriend, we are communicating. Mostly I record voice messages. I'm, I'm not typing. Uh, and once I told her, look, can you buy me the 200 grams pack of Samba coffee? It's a coffee from her place. Um, and bring it when you're coming. And she was like, yeah, okay. I visited Instagram tomorrow and there was an ad Samba coffee. So how? I never, ever, nowhere typed Samba coffee. The only place when I mentioned Samba coffee anywhere is a voice message that I sent to her over Viber. So if they say they are not stealing and not listening our messages, they are lying because they are. So we need to build more trust somehow. I don't know how. I gave a couple of examples how. You should figure out the rest. So you should trust me and e-commerce future will be brighter. Thanks everyone for coming here and for listening to me. This is my socials, WP Alex everywhere. If you want to find me somewhere, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram. I'm not an asshole. I'm following back if you follow me. So please do. Thank you all. Any questions? Nope.